Hi, in this lecture, uh, the idea was to introduce you what software architecture is and then what software design is and then techniques on how to do software design properly. And for this lecture, uh, you're going to see that this is more of an abstract thing. So instead of looking to lines of code, we're thinking now about software, different systems talking to different systems and how those things can work together. And these concepts are fundamental if you want to become a strong software architect. Um, if you see definitions of software architecture, you can, for example, this one, software architecture is the global organization of the software, including the way it is divided into subsystems, the policy according those systems interact, and how the, how the interfaces are defined. Uh, this is what software architecture is about, about software, how your software is divided maybe into different modules, and if so, how those modules interact with each other, what, what language do they speak to talk to each other. This is software architecture, and you see that this appears in most of the important definitions of software architecture. And as a software architect, uh, I want to come up with the best architecture for my problem, and this means I need to understand my problem. And there are many perspectives in there. For example, the first one is the requirements. Maybe my requirements can help me to decide the best architecture for the problem. Or quality needs, for example, uh, I have a performance requirement in my software. My software needs to reply within one second. I may have legal constraints, economic constraints. So there are many different drivers that can tell me how to build my, my architecture. I list a few of them, for example, performance, availability, interoperability. Uh, you don't have to memorize all those things, but you, you kind of need to, to see the plethora of different attributes we have, right? And, and in a way, um, be able to understand them. Um, and in practice, you're going to see that it is impossible to design an architecture that favors all the topics in, in the slides before. But what we do in practice is a, a lot of trade-offs, right? Uh, if I favor this, I'm going to lose a little bit of that. And this is why software architecture can be tricky. Then I gave you a case study about this tool we were building in here. The tool was able to, uh, the tool was focused on um, grading online students so students do assignments and then we give them grades and i just discussed how we decided to organize things for example how github talks to our software how we then um, grade the students and how we make this to be scalable i'm not going to go into the details but this is software architecture right we are discussing how our system behaves from a high level perspective and how the different components talk to each other yeah, uh, there are lots of architectural patterns in this course. I'm not diving into them, but as soon as uh, you have more knowledge, please dive into this book, for example, from Martin Fowler. But what we're going to focus in here is uh, software design, which is um, we're not thinking about large systems and how they communicate anymore, but how to design each one of those systems and making sure that they are easy to evolve uh, and easy to maintain. And basically, if you want to know literature, I'm going to discuss ideas from Grady Bush. Uh, Grady Bush is one of uh, the creators of UML, and he has this book on object-oriented analysis. And there he has uh, four good ideas, abstraction, encapsulation, modularization, and hierarchy. And Robert Martin from the other book, he, discuss, um, he discusses design orders, uh, design smells, like problems we can see in, in different designs. So let's go. So the first one is about abstractions. And as a software designer, you have to think about abstractions all the time. For example, as soon as you see um, something in a requirement, um, what, what is the high level concept behind it, right? How are you going to move this requirement to software? We need to think about abstractions. And then this is where thinking about concepts and high level concepts make sense. I'm going to show you a concrete example, but um, first, so what are the concepts behind it? What are the important and unimportant properties of, of these that I'm seeing in the real world? And what, what do they share in common? Um, for example, this is a set of abstractions. So I have this order. It can be a class. It can be a Python file, a bunch of functions. But in there, this represents what an order is in the real world, right? So concepts in real world are very complex. In software, we need to come up with abstractions that somehow simplify those concepts and make them more manageable from the software perspective. 
and I have items and discounts and you know these are abstractions this is what I'm talking about so when you're looking to a requirement you need to see okay this is the concepts in the real world how can I come up with abstractions that would represent those things in my software you can see that uh, these different concepts abstractions they may have relationships right so for example an order has many items so this is abstract uh, this is abstraction and this is what we need to do when designing software uh, as soon as you start to do this and think about abstractions then we have some things to discuss for example the first one is cohesion uh, and cohesion means that the abstraction we design it uh, represents a single concept right it is cohesive it does it represents one concept it does one thing and having cohesive abstractions or modules or whatever granularity you, you want to discuss is always a good thing because cohesive elements are easier to be reused they are less complex and this means easy to test and easy to maintain on the other hand if you have something that is not cohesive meaning it does too many things let's suppose i have order and items all together in a single abstraction maybe that's too much that is just way harder more complex uh, harder to test and etc so we want to have cohesive modules all the time um, you can think about cohesion on how things are related to each other if you have um, for example in uh, the picture on my right you can see that i have one concept related to the other but then i have all other things they are not really connected so and all of these in the same module this is a not cohesive module but if things they are related they, they belong together um, this is high cohesion yep so what would make these abstractions less cohesive if you put them all together for example this would make them less cohesive then we went to coupling and coupling is the other perspective on the same problem because uh, if we have many small cohesive modules classes functions at some point they will have to get together to do the task right because the task the, the final outcome you want is big so you need many elements to work together and as soon as you have something that depends on the other you have coupling so a needs b this is coupling right um, you, you cannot your system doesn't a doesn't work if you remove b this is coupling and if you have things that are very coupled so a depends on b c d e f g etc 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 this is very coupled and this means um, this module is just very hard to reuse right i mean if you want to put a in another system you have to take a and b and c and d and this is just hard it is more fragile if c breaks a will probably break as well if d breaks a will break as well right you can propagate the problems to a because of this coupling relationship so what we want is things that are as least coupled as possible so high cohesion low coupling that's the mantra that we have to follow uh, and in the previous diagram you can see some coupling in there right so order has many items so order depends on item there's a coupling relationship in there what you need to do as a designer is to understand whether this is a healthy coupling or not circular dependencies uh, a depends on b b depends on a this is a bit strange we try to avoid this as much as possible right and um, so that we just have coupling in one direction i'm gonna get there uh, more about it but then before let's discuss information hiding this is another interesting concept when you have many modules or many classes and those classes talk to each other which is if you have a module this module needs to hide its internal details from the other modules so if there is some some task that module a does module b should not know how a does the task module b of course needs to know what a does because then b can invoke a but internal details should be completely abstracted away from b right and why is this good because if a really encapsulates if a really hides the way it does the job this means we can easily replace a we can throw a away put another a that does the same thing but in a different way and the rest of the system will still work right so in practice what does x what does that module do it has to be clear to the outsiders but how does it do this has to be hidden from others yeah this is encapsulation i give you some formal definitions you can see on the slides personally how do i check for encapsulation 
uh, whenever I'm programming something, I always have another file and then I invoke, I play with my module or my function and I see if I just look to this file, can I guess how it does from, from the inside? If the answer is yes, well, then there's a problem. If the answer is no, this means I encapsulated it and that's uh, good to go. Then modularity is about uh, making sure that we have different modules that are um, very cohesive and very low coupled. And those models talk to each other, right? And this is a modular system. So we look to our system and we try to break it into small modules that are very cohesive, low coupled, and they talk to each other, right? So for example, instead of having this big thing that does everything, that contains orders, deliveries, reports, I can try to break them into different modules. And of course, they have relationships. For example, order talks to delivery, delivery, delivery talks to reports. So they are very cohesive because they just do one thing. They are responsible for one thing. And uh, they are not very coupled, right? The coupling seems quite controlled in there. And this is a modular software. We have modules. And as an architect, we try to minimize coupling and maximize cohesion. If they are small and cohesive and easier, uh, if they are small and cohesive, uh, this means they're easier to be replaced, right? And that's what we want. Uh, modules should hide information, so the information hiding makes sense in here. They should cooperate, and you have the coupling cohesion battle here. Hierarchy is about then discussing how the abstractions are related to each other, right? We saw abstractions, so order and item. But hierarchy is about thinking how those things should be related. And in a way, even some sort of come up with a, some sort of ranking of ordering, right? So this depends on this, but this doesn't depend on that. And this is more high level, this is more low level. So thinking about how you, the hierarchy of your modules or classes or functions, whatever, is very important as a software architect as well. There are two principles. Maybe they're quite hard to see right now. Um, that are somehow related to the way uh, you, the hierarchy of your system works. And one is the open-close principle, which is modules, they should be open for extensions. It should be easy for me to just add new behavior on an existing module. And another one is the dependency inversion principle. And it is the idea that if you have a high-level module, High-level things should only depend on high-level things. But if you have low-level things, these low-level things should depend either on, uh, they should depend on abstractions. So in a way you have at the top abstractions only, and then you have implementations, low-level details after. In the example before, you can think about the discount. The discount is an abstraction. It is very high-level. It describes one abstraction. And then the specific discounts, Christmas discount, and etc., they are low level and they depend on the abstractions, right? So depending on abstractions, um, it is always a good choice. We didn't go a lot into details on this, so you don't have to study these that much for the exam. But in the future, I want you to dive into these concepts and get to know them because they are very important, okay? So as you can see, we have relationships, um, we have abstractions like discount, and this is a very high-level abstraction that others depend upon. So you see that order doesn't depend on Christmas discount. Order depends on discount, right? So abstractions depending on abstractions. That's the goal. Finally, we saw some uh, software design smells. So designs that are hard to change, um, they are bad, right? So if you want to change something, but it's just too hard, uh, your design is rigid. We don't like it. Fragile, so this means it's easy to break. You change something and then suddenly you have to change in lots of other points. It is hard to reuse, so I cannot just uh, reuse this part of my system in another system. That's just too hard. It is hard to do the right thing. So you know the best thing to do would be to do A, but it is so hard to do A that you end up doing some uh, workarounds. Over design, lots of copy and pastes and difficulty to understand the design. You read it and you kind of don't understand what's going on. So these are symptoms of bad design. And as an architect, you have to monitor those things. Uh, and as soon as you notice one of them, then you rethink, how can you design your architecture, your design, 
so that it doesn't suffer from, from these smells. Lots of empirical research showing um, that, for example, coupling and cohesion and complexity, um, it happens in our system. We do have some highly coupled classes, but usually, well, this is a distribution, uh, it's a power law, so it's more on the tail. So uh, most of our code is simple and less coupled, but indeed we have coupled parts of our system and maybe these are the parts that need attention. And research shows that higher coupled and uh, or low cohesive modules, they are more related to change and defect proneness. This means things that are more coupled, developers have to change more often. Or things that are uh, uh, low cohesive, developers have to change more often. And they have more bugs as well, and we don't like those things. Context matters. So if you're discussing coupling and cohesion and encapsulation, you have to take the context into account, right? Because maybe the discussion about coupling in a web application is different from a mobile application. So the architect, the software architect, needs to be aware of all those things. So finally, uh, to sum up, we discussed software architecture and software design, and this is uh, the goal of this lecture.